What's up, everybody? It's Tamer checking in from my quarantine day one. <laughs> what an adventure it's been so far. From LA to Hong Kong, 15 hour flight, 10 days of delay due to COVID vaccinations, the amount of logistics and time spent to make this exciting teacher training experience happen for our community here in Hong Kong as well as some of the learning lessons along the way is uh, why I'm checking in right now to share with you vlog number one from Tame Your Quarantine. <laughs> oh boy, here we are back in Hong Kong. When I arrive back to the city I am bombarded with hundreds of memories and feelings and emotions and both happy and sad exciting and also very challenging it's almost like I'm arriving in a second home <laughs> I know the airport by the back of my hand after flying in and out of Hong Kong International Airport probably hundreds of times. Uh, and it's definitely a new day and age. Going through the terminal now just to get your baggage is to three hours due to COVID and all of the government precautions in place to ensure that Hong Kong stays safe. And then driving over the bridge and through the city where I used to commute daily, through the MTR and the taxis, driving past Happy Valley where I used to live, driving past buildings where I used to work, it's just this, this waterfall of, of memories that just pours through me. And I feel really grateful to have had the opportunity to spend so much time in this wonderful city. as Hong Kong will always be one of those dear places to my heart, which I am honored and appreciative and thankful to be able to call home. The challenge is, is that it's no longer home. I've moved on. I have let it go. I let go of the idea of having a business investment visa. I let go of the idea of having permanent residency. I let go of relationships and family that made it feel much more homey. And I let go of the dream of Hong Kong being somewhere where I will stay long term. I've let go of the excitement of being here and being able to travel regularly around Asia. And I've had to let go of a lot of stuff, a lot of physical stuff and things in order to continue moving on. Letting it go completely is a process. And the more you're able to let go, the more freedom and peace you will find. So this trip back to Hong Kong, guys, is an opportunity for me to let it go. I wasn't able to come back for a while due to COVID, and I still have a ton of stuff here that I need to pack up and bring back. And the more I come to terms with just letting it all go, the easier it becomes for me to create a new chapter where I can continue to come here and serve and show up and teach and inspire and educate and, and work. But there is definitely a lot of first cleanup and closure to happen, which is why I'm here. Beyond the teacher trainings, beyond the events, beyond all the workshops, beyond the, the, the passion for wanting to serve, the real reason for why is to let it go. And it's hard. Letting go is a process. And I'm allowing myself to be fully vulnerable to experience that process of letting go without getting stuck in the emotions, without getting stuck in my head, just trusting in God's guidance that this is what needs to happen for me to grow. So I drive through Central today. I remember the first time I was here, setting business meetings with 
our very first studio in Happy Valley, where we launched the anti-gravity teacher trainings. I remember so many, so many wonderful, wonderful memories in Causeway Bay, where I used to live, with my Hong Kong family, where I used to stay. Letting go of studios and businesses that some of them lasted, some of them didn't. Many closed, many are still here, which also gives space for the new studios that want to work with us and want to continue to inspire people around our philosophy of health is wealth. Boy, oh boy, it has been quite the, quite the first 12 hours getting back. <laughs> I'll never forget the hot, humid streets and the dim sum and the people hustling and bustling and the, from the garbage pushing folks all the way to the small little corner shops. This city has captivated my heart for so long and it's a place that I will be always grateful to have had spent so much time. Now, flashing forward. We are here in a hotel quarantine, folks, for the next 21 days. My hotel is about the size of my room back home. <laughs> I have a queen-size bed, a little table, and a small bathroom. Hands down, the most confining quarantine I've done so far is the others, when I was coming back and forth from Taiwan last year, were done at home. This one is 21 days in this room. And if I s just so happen to leave that door, I can be charged $25,000 as a fine. So it's no joke. And it's also... <laughs> in one way very it's liberating because it gives me the next three weeks to dive deep into my soul and to dive deep into my own personal transformations of which God has given me this divine timing to do so being very vulnerable I am right now in my recovery from alcoholism just openly uh, there's nothing to hide around it anymore because alcohol and alcoholism can affect anybody. And after moving back to America this past year, it bit me pretty bad. It started affecting my health, started affecting my work, my relationships, also just having this grip over my life became very toxic. And so by God's grace, he has given me this next three weeks to cleanse and to regrow a new brain and to set myself free from addictions, particularly alcohol, so that I can inspire more people on their path to recovery, so that I can help and give back to those who need some coaching, need someone to guide them through their journey of becoming free. So it is a very sobering quarantine, <laughs> to say the least. <sighs> However, it's all meant to be. I am exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. So as I enjoy my first night here in Hong Kong, I got a high floor room, which was pretty awesome. Thank you, Yoga Room, for helping out with that. I am settled in and I feel very at peace it was pretty nerve wracking and it was, uh, I was feeling very anxious earlier checking myself into the 21 day quarantine of which all your meals are dropped at the door and you're basically in a glorified <laughs> jail and I was kind of worried about detoxing and how it's going to make me feel and what am I going to occupy my time with however I've gotten out of all of that and I'm totally present 
and at peace and at terms with this chapter of my life right now. Both in continuing to inspire the world to tame life and live our health as well as philosophy, both in continuing to create and grow and contribute towards my highest purpose to embark on my recovery once and for all, fully setting myself free from addictions, using this time as a beautiful opportunity for me to read and write and reconnect to myself, as well as utilizing this time to rest. It's been a very, very hectic past nine months of moving back to California. So I'm appreciating this opportunity as some time to rest and reconnect. Not only to myself, but to other people around the world who might tune into some of these videos. And to God. I've been turned on by a beautiful angel that came into my life over the summer to a new spiritual path. And it has invigorated me and it is it it's it's lit up my entire world by being able to turn over a lot of my uncertainties to the angels and to God. It has completely set myself, my mind, and my emotions free from free from some of the daily challenges that were once haunting me. Now I am so much more clean, more present, more clear, more focused, more determined. <laughs> Just to share with you, for those of you who don't know, I currently work with Vivint in Solar. So I go around Southern California connecting to homeowners every day and helping them go green. With the energy crisis that we are experiencing globally right now, <laughs> I feel like I've been blessed with a wonderful opportunity and a mission to help contribute towards environmental sustainability. And <laughs> literally five minutes ago, I just got off the phone with my customer who's based down in Southern California, who's gonna put up 10 panels on her home. Woohoo! <laughs> so while I'm in Hong Kong, I'm still working on my solar project, and I'm also building more community around Tame Life. It's time I really bring this concept that I have been very slowly and very, you know, kind of up and down, giving it time and attention and then getting busy. It's really time to bring my, one of my, my gifts of inspiring people through, through creating content to the world both with my videos, with with my written content, through social media, as well as through my music. I am so happy to be back on track of getting Tame Life rebranded, fired up, and being to pour a lot of time and attention into that as a vessel for how I want to serve. And on that note, <laughs> the first exciting project from Tame Life coming at you right now is 21 days for how to tame your life. And I'm doing mine from a quarantine. <laughs> so it's a 21 day challenge of which I'll be sharing with you guys tomorrow to incorporate alkalining, breath work, meditation, exercise, as well as focus time into your day to day life. And by doing so for 21 days, how it can help you change and, and grow and get yourself back on track as well as to establish new habits and to connect to a community of people who believe in the value of health as wealth. So super excited about that. <laughs> Can tame my fired up. And last but not least, just enjoy this journey. You know, I have six weeks in Hong Kong. Day one. It's one of those things like what you put in is what you're gonna get out, like many things in life. And I am showing up to serve you guys. I am just pouring out as much content and knowledge and tools and skills, inspiration inside the studio and outside the studio as I can so that I can ultimately feel like a place that I've called home for so long continues to allow me to contribute towards, of which I'm so grateful for the opportunity to do so. I can't wait to meet some of my students who are going to be showing up. I can't wait to see business partners and friends and family. In a place I've called home for six years and have traveled it and out for the past eight. It's, uh, it's just such a warming feeling coming back to the 852 on a mission to serve. 
not only to serve myself first over this next 21 days as I dive deep into my into my soul, into my growth, as well as spend the following three weeks in serving the community of people who love to fly high and people who want to experience greater well-being and people who want to become teachers in this technique one day. Hmm. Right now it is, hey, it's 1.11 a.m.